Hello and welcome to the Back Podcast, Australia's favourite gaming podcast, as voted on by us, the hosts of the Back Podcast, Australia's favourite gaming podcast. It's Monday, the 4th of March, 2022. I'm Nick Richardson, and today I'm joined by Gus Ronald. Well, hi there. And little Will Yates. Hello. Ah. <laughs> oh. Adorkable. Look at this. <laughs> Can I just say, first and foremost, I am so glad we're mm. back doing the back podcast. It's been so long. I can't believe that you guys haven't been doing it. We're back. <laughs> it's the three of us. I mean, Pete's not here, but it's finally good to get this mm-hmm. thing back off the ground again because I've missed it. I have missed I it. I agree. I agree. I not have it's, my fill. You're like, I'm trying to think of an animal that only thinks its reality exists. And really, I think that's probably all animals now that I think about it. That's true, no actually. Bear is, no bear is sort of <laughs> hanging out and thinking, I wonder what's happening in Spain right now. Like, <laughs> I wonder who's doing a podcast so, without me right now. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, well, it is a joy to have uh, to have you both back. And Will, I don't think, mm. have you officially been on the show before? Uh, I believe I was there for the great Stussy debacle. Um, oh, he that was. was. That was, oh, that was the last oh, time. That was the three oh, of us again, well. wasn't it? It was, it yeah. Was. It was. Oh. Yeah, that was the last time we did the podcast. That was the last time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bit. Will, uh, for for those uh, for those not in the know, and by not in the know, I mean for those who aren't in our company Slack, which is mm. I don't know, almost a hundred percent of people watching. <laughs> uh, Will is the standby guest when something is going wrong with one of the other guests coming mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so your love would be, hey, Will, <laughs> if you were to have a favorite story this week, yeah. what would it be? Um, so I appreciate the fact that you, uh, you're in now. And then if anyone doesn't me. know who I am, I am the standby to the standby. <laughs> uh, that's true. Yeah. You, well, you, you were the person that, um, when we, at the beginning of the year, we were talking about, oh, you know, getting guests on and doing that. Uh, Pete and I were like, I wonder if we should say to Gus, you know, uh, he doesn't need to do it cause he focuses on, he has so many other things that he needs to do each mm. week and Monday is kind of a very busy day for us, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Pete and I spoke for maybe 20 minutes about how, how do we approach this with Gus so that he doesn't feel like we're actually cutting him out of this, which is not what we're doing. We're actually trying to make more time for him, blah, blah, blah. And we literally op- we came up with a game plan and, okay, this is how we're going to do it and all the contingencies if he takes it badly and then opened our mouth to be like, you don't have to do it. You were like, great, sounds awesome. Like, <laughs> Got right. straight in with the work that I had to do. I was like, oh, thank Christ. Yeah. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> immediately starts animating. Well, but that's so. the thing. Now I start like animating on Monday mornings or doing something like that, watching the news or watching the back mm-hmm. podcast and enjoying it immensely. Yeah. So yeah, I get the best of both worlds. But now I um, I will have a busy week because I'm here with you lovely gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, well, I am excited as well, and I think we should just jump into it I because so. the news is not going to break itself up. <laughs> the Bag Up is presented by one of our Top Stitch patrons and the best evil person we know, the inventor of daylight savings. Oh, God. I, I, Every just, year. Fuck off. <laughs> I just, I, I, I genuinely, I want to know, I mm. want to know, and I know that I just said we need to start getting into the video games, but I want to know why can we not just work on a universal time mm. where every country is in a different, like, you know, maybe our work day starts at mm-hmm. 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. and finishes at 7 a.m., but it's still daylight. Like, why Why is that not a thing? Why can't we- why You just think move the working work? day around daylight hours rather than change all our clocks. So then- Just, like, just have a universal time. It's always 12 just o'clock. Just make a universal- or, Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. For, um, for example, yeah. I am after, directly after <laughs> this podcast, I am going on another podcast. And that is an American show called DLC, hosted by Jeff Kanana and uh, Christian Spicer. And they were like, this is the time that we're doing it. And I'm like, awesome. And then Daylight Savings happens. And it's like, shit, mm-hmm. it's actually now an hour. Early. And that's, bull- that's dumb. Well, okay, that's dumb. I will that's agree dumb. with you. Apart from the fact that, as I mentioned to you guys before the podcast, I was away on the weekend. I was staying in a hotel. Uh, it was it had a very comfortable bed. And I was staying there on the Saturday night. And then I woke up and I was like, I've got to check out at 10 o'clock. I was like, oh, no, I don't. I get an extra hour. So I picked oh. the best mm. time to or like the best time to be away at a hotel um sorry the best time to be away for daylight savings which was staying somewhere that i got an extra hour of accommodation and sleep in in a very comfy bed so that would be my recommendation for future uh future daylight savings fuck arounds uh yeah so universal time let's start making it happen Mm. i know i've got support out there for anyone who does podcasts across time zones 
I, I feel like I could at least get those people on board and then we'll just work from there. There's a bear somewhere going, am I late for a podcast? I think I am. <laughs> in, in Spain. In Spain. In Spain. <laughs> uh, a very Good. long-winded intro. Mm. Uh, and now I'll segue seamlessly. I mean, sorry, I mean Evil Spy Boy. Get your exclamation mark Spy Boys out of the chat because thanks to his generous Patreon support, Evil Spy Boy is bringing you the backup and he's hoping you bring the generosity to Food Bank Australia. Food Bank provide regular breakfast to more than 132,000 students at schools across the country. And on top of this, more than 200,000 kids seek food relief from their services every single month. Donate at foodbank.org.au. Nightbot has a chat link for you right now and head to tasteofmultifish.com for more information about evil spy boys proclivities and speaking of proclivities mm. let's back it up and look at the biggest stories of the week as voted on by us the host of the backup where we back up look at the biggest stories of the week will yes i'm gonna say you're the guest this week mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so what story made you back up and say hey that's a pretty big story uh just a lot of notes for this one lots of this is a pretty big story in terms of lots of notes and things to say mm -hmm. so i'm gonna mm -hmm. kick into that uh as a reminder of playstation plus exists and it's about to get a whole lot bigger. Did you uh, just say PayStation Plus? PayStation, because that sounds pretty <laughs> much perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's what you'll be doing. Uh, oh, yeah. There are three new tiers. One tier is kind of the same uh, for PlayStation Plus coming. I think it was, I didn't get the date. It's like late, early July, I think. Okay. Is, uh, where it's where it's looking. Uh, yep. the, the first one is PlayStation Plus Essential, which is basically what we're all doing now. If you're on PlayStation Plus, yep. uh, it's uh, three games a month, one for PlayStation 5, uh, online abilities, uh, and that's about it. And that's usually coming in at $11.95 Australian uh, per month, and then $79.95 a year. That's what it currently is. That hasn't had a little cheeky dollar that's or two slapped on. That's not changed okay, at yeah, all. They've just, they've just changed the name. So yeah. you can stick around on that one. Uh, the two new tiers are PlayStation Plus Extra, which will include around 400 downloadable PS4 and PS5 games uh, from both first-party Sony games as well as third-party games as well. There's no Australian uh, prices for these two. So uh, for US, it's looking at $14.99 US uh, a month and then $99.99 uh, a year. Uh, and then PlayStation Plus Premium adds on 340 PlayStation 1, 2, and PSP games, and PS3 games will be streamable as the, the PlayStation Now thing that's existed for a while kind of get mm -hmm. rolled into this tier. Not for us, though, and we'll get to that. Uh, but on top of this is also something that was kind of trialed, I think, late last year with, like, Death Stranding and stuff, which is limited time trials of video games. Oh, uh, yeah, right. So that's now going to be included in this third tier. Uh, again, no Australian prices for this, but seventeen ninety nine a month uh, for US and one hundred and nineteen ninety nine US a year. And there's no Australian for that because in Australia we'll be getting a version of that tier, which is PlayStation Premium Deluxe, which is confusing because Deluxe sounds oh better God. than just PlayStation Premium. But we're losing That's a right. feature, which is PlayStation Three games will not be streamable uh, because we don't we don't have access to pay us now. And we will not have access to PS now. So instead, we just have PS1, PS2, and PS <coughs> PSP games, as well as, look, it's all a lot of very confusing stuff. So there's but basically plus, extra, premium, yes. now, and, and deluxe as all but, their, like, mm -hmm. yes. suffixes. No, not, no, but now, I don't think now is ever going to exist. Oh, no, no, no I just that's going away. Yeah. Oh, now's going yes, away. Yeah. Now is yeah. then. And now, now is then. Is, yeah. Okay. So yeah, when right. is now? Now is yeah, just then. We're now, now just then. <laughs> now, now is now. Now is plus. Oh no, god. Now is premium. Yeah. Um. But basically, yeah. there are three tiers. One of those tiers is different for Australia, and it's called premium deluxe. Even though there is one thing missing from the premium, but it's called deluxe. They should just call it deluxe and take out the premium. Yeah, take out the premium. That's, yeah. that's where it starts to get really messy. I mean, it's yeah. already very messy, but uh, yeah. I, I mean, this is good, right? This is what we were all kind of hanging out for. I mean, now we've just mm. kind of semi-sorted out the, the, the categories there. This yeah. is like a bit more to pay for what everyone's already paying if you want a library a la Xbox Game Pass kind of stuff. Totally. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, massively. I, I really want a back catalogue of PlayStation games this. Like, yeah, I, I was just thinking about it before and it's like I definitely slept on a lot of PS4 and I guess PS3 games, but I can't get the PS3 <laughs> games. But I definitely <laughs> like that this is a stretch between like the like I'll go back and play PS1 and 2, like a nostalgia mm. nut. And yep. anything that was good enough on 3 probably found its way to 4 as a deluxe version, which I'll probably be able to play with totally. premium. Ooh, yeah, I, I, I think that's going to get be the get around, like stuff like the Nathan Drake collection, I'm sure mm -hmm. will get tied into PS4 games that can be streamed. 
Um, yeah, totally. I, I, it's interesting for me because I was a PlayStation boy growing up, not an Xbox Same. boy. So Game Pass yeah. was great because I was like, I've never played these things. And now I look at this and I'm like, I don't know if there's anything I need from this because I grew mm. up with all these things. I think PS1 and 2 and PSP as well will be very exciting to be able to play. But it's an interesting thing where like Game Pass has always been exciting because I haven't played any of these things. Yeah. Whereas I'm less inclined for this. I'm sure there'll be something that'll pull me towards it for sure. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. I, I'm the same because I, I I was a PlayStation kid growing up. <clears throat> I think that the there there is the thing like oh, the obvious comparison being Game Pass, um, and but I think that's not the obvious mm -hmm. like that's the I think because it's it's big and people want PlayStation potentially to do something like that. But it's way more like the Nintendo Online offering where it is just that that back catalog. We're not getting the new things with the exception of those demos being... Mm. I, the demo to me is the most exciting part because it's like, oh yeah, I'll check out... Again, it depends on what kind of demos yeah. we're getting here. If it's like, if it is their big, huge first party games, you're always going to be able to play the first X amount of hours or whatever. Mm. Or if it's just select titles that mm. they get a deal with the publisher, blah, blah, blah. Um, but... Yeah, as, personally, as someone who's, who who never really looks back at video games, I'm always mm -hmm. looking forward. Uh, this this doesn't hold too much, except for the fact that I suppose that it, it's giving value to the PlayStation Five as a, yeah. a as a piece of hardware. It's like okay, if you have a PlayStation Five. You, with this extra amount of money that you pay, have access to a ton of games that you can play on this thing uh, in the same way that Xbox has been doing that. So I guess in, in that respect, it's good. It's just, it, it doesn't really feel like something, I guess, that like is made for me. And I would, I think I'd rather just put my money into <laughs> something. Particularly because Game Pass, the, the huge thing about Game Pass is the first party games yeah. that you're getting. But I think the, the other thing is the, all the third-party games that they get a mm. licensing deal with and drop on Game Pass. And so it's like, you know, half the time when a game's coming out, I'm like, oh, I should check if it's on Game Pass before I go buy it on mm. Steam or something. And again, we're not getting that with something like this. I was about to say, it's yeah. like, they haven't announced that, but there's, I, I'm sure, potential down the line for them. Like, they're not saying this is the 400 get PS4 and 5 games and this is it. It doesn't update. Mm. Like, it's a library. I'm sure, I'm not sure if, it's, if they've uh, announced anywhere how flexible that is and how regularly they'll be updating or what's the opposite of updating like removing <laughs> like in the yeah, way that totally. yeah in the way that xbox or the the, the game pass does but I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the model they're moving towards they might just as i said be keeping their cards close to their chest at this stage by saying hey here's 400 like that's enough yeah. for now and and whether or not first party does go there because playstation do love that like first party premium experience with that big title that gets held up yeah. on a plinth and is like go buy this mm. it's 130 dollars go get it now kind of thing um which and which they have said that yeah they they're not going to add those because it it will make those games it'll lower their value or like in, unviable mm. like like oh they yeah, yeah okay. they will not be able to make them yeah, uh, in the same way that they have because of that, and and there has been some some discussion about because obviously you know Xbox has a lot more money to sink into stuff like this mm. uh, because of um, because of Microsoft, they yeah. can just run for ten years losing money uh, until it becomes profitable. But also, what what is the future of a uh, Xbox game going to look like? Is it going to be like a cheaper version of a video game that comes out more often or whatever, as opposed to yeah. Huge and, and then again, it raises the question: like, will PlayStation not release that day one, but in a month after that release comes out and everyone's gone and bought that copy? Maybe not a month, but like, how soon after it's been released will yeah. it find its way into the PS? Plus extra library. <laughs> Read that off the script. Um, Will, what do you re what do you reckon with that? Like a year? Yeah, I think maybe a year. It's kind of like you look at a lot of the PlayStation Plus games. Like a few of their first party, but smaller, definitely feel like indie titles. But they end up in PlayStation Plus as one of those free games mm. almost a year on. So something like that totally could mm. become a thing. That yeah, like a year on. Once if, and I mean, it also depends on how. I would say it depends on how much people jump on those higher tiers and how much this is gaining for them. Like I'm sure it, like the quote that Jim Ryan gave to um, gameindustry.biz is that he didn't want to lock anything in now by saying we definitely won't because yeah. the game industry changes so much. So yeah, I, I definitely, I, at the very least a year on, I'm sure first party stuff will jump on there. Mm. It, it must be hard because with when Microsoft did the game pass thing, it, it really started as, like a you know a smaller 
oh, this is interesting and we'll just see what happens. Yeah. <clears throat> and they've just been able to grow and grow that as a service. Uh, with PlayStation launching this, there are all these immediate comparison points that, totally. they, that mm. they're going to be put up against. But but they're also like, we need to figure out how this works for our business model as well. So I don't think it's bad value by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's just like, in the same way, I don't subscribe to the Nintendo one. I just, mm. I don't have time to play <laughs> old games. I don't have time to play all the games that are coming out now. That said, there is a, there's a portion of the market which I fall into, which is I will just be uh, satisfied by having a library. Like I go and check Game Pass regularly and I might just be grabbing that one new game that does tickle my fancy at the top of it. But knowing there's that pile of games underneath it keeps me happy. And occasionally I'll go through like a Friday night scroll with some friends and be like, hey, let's play this random thing we never mm. actually got into playing. But I do find it interesting that like at 400 games sounds like that's more games than I'll play in my lifetime. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll be able to just completely fill my library out with that. And it's like, once you start scrolling down, you realize, oh, I got to the bottom of 400 really quickly. And there's yeah. a lot there that I wasn't well, interested in. I will say it's more like, 840 because you've also got the playstation one things if you do the premium i and get I, and you think i, I want to play playstation one games, <laughs> totally. and you scroll down and you're like i don't want to play any of these no. I, but i like that they're here yeah but if if you had to pick a generation will like mm. if you if you had to go playstation one playstation two psp or ps3 uh which which one tickles your fancy the most if i told you you had access to those games Possibly. I feel like PS2 was my era of gaming, so probably PS2. Mm -hmm. I think PS1's nice, but I think it's nice in the way that, like, playing the NES games on the Switch are. You're like, oh, cool, I want to go play something else now. Whereas PS2, I think you could probably sink a bit more time into. So mm -hmm. having those will be nice, for sure. Gus? Yeah, PS2. I, I Again, I wasn't as big on PlayStation than I was with um other with Xbox and Nintendo, but mm -hmm. PS2 was the one that I, I think, as Will said, it's like there's actual gameplay you can enjoy and keep playing whereas ps1 there's some stuff there that just has not aged well i think yeah. except for croc I, I would like to play croc, croc. on my playstation yep. 5 you can play croc sure. will that's all i want uh Same with you. playstation 3 had some great games mm. but it, it it um i mean that was the beginning of so many of the franchises that we love on playstation that's today but it, for yeah. me it mm. it would definitely be um psp Mm. Uh, it, PSP and PS Vita just had mm. just really experimented with weird stuff, and they and also it was like I don't know. I just feel like it was a bit ahead of its time. It, it, they it also it also was the platform where they went like, we'll take the big game that is on our marquee uh, home console and do the portable version, and not like not dumb it down. There it is. <laughs> there it is. How's that, how's that battery looking in there? Uh, is that a fat bat? It was a spelunky. <laughs> Device. That's all I had and played on this. That's it. But uh, yeah, actually, it's not working. So much fun to hack. But like, like Resistance Retribution, uh, Siphon Filter games, Metal Gear Solid Portable <laughs> Ops was so good. Yeah. Um. Uh. Like the, that sort of the Grand Theft Auto, um, Chinatown Wars was on there as well. I know that was on DS too. But yeah, like it just. I feel like it. It was more experimental than anything. It else still feels on, like the so. best handheld I might have ever played as well. Oh, it is. Little thumbsticks, sure, but like, yeah. Oh, the touchpad at the back that you kept accidentally touching. <laughs> oh, there's a whole other podcast um, about the, that. The Vita, I used to hack, I hacked my Vita like so much and it was an iPad before the iPad came out because I used to, I watched the entire series of Firefly on the train ah! on my Vita. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, the, the, it was, and then the iPad came out. I was like, okay, well, this is useless now. But yeah, <laughs> God, what a device. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, I'm glad that they finally confirmed it because there was a lot of speculation yeah. and it seems like all the speculation has been pretty bang on. No one was like, oh, there's going to be all the first, the first party titles are com coming day and day. It was like, nah. Temp your expectations and yep. it's going to um, kind of hit exactly what we expected. Uh, oh, yeah. Speaking of things we expected, Gus, mm. your story uh, from this week. It was expected as well. Uh, another confirmation as well is that E3 has officially been cancelled for 2022. Uh, but in this case, it's the digital version of E3 that we were all pretty sure, uh, I think, in January, the ESA, the Entertainment Software Association, officially cancelled the physical version of it, which we all kind of knew was going to happen. Um, it's been cancelled since 2020, I think. 2020 was digital only. 2021 mm -hmm. was digital. Um, and then this year, they have said they're actually going to cancel the, uh, whatever you want to call the digital uh, online uh, COVID version of E3 um, and uh, it is done. So they have uh, officially announced that it will um, it will not be happening. All the um, 
studios and third parties and oh sorry first parties will all be still i think doing their own thing it's still the time of the year where a lot of this stuff's going to happen you've got you know sony doing their event and everyone else bethesda nintendo microsoft i'm i, I haven't checked up on all of them but i'm pretty sure that all their stuff is still happening I would assume, but uh, in terms of being under the umbrella of E3, any other events, any long-term digital sort of streaming for the week, that stuff is all cancelled um, because they've said they're going to devote all their energy and resources to revitalizing E3 for 2023, where they want to bring back both a physical and a digital uh, version of the show. So, yeah, I mean, this wasn't, as you even with the PlayStation thing, this wasn't a surprise. This is what we expected. Um, but uh, I guess... In theory, it's a bit sad because it just removes something that would have been there to help energize what is a sort of festival of games over that time of the year. But at the same time, the last two digital events have kind of floundered. They haven't gotten great feedback. Uh, it's been very fragmented. It hasn't carried anywhere near the same level of energy that literally comes from physical events, seeing crowds. All that stuff is still very important. And I think A3 or the ESA have come to come to realize that and think it's not even worth the time and money to wrangle it all for another year. And instead let's just cool it and wait for next year. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. And I, honestly, I'm not that sad. I think that <laughs> actually go, Will, you, you, you put your input here first. Are you sad, Will? Uh, I'm sad as a person that's always watched it from home, but I'm also like, I think the fact that there's so many bitsy ones now, I'm kind of, as someone that, that likes to, I don't know, I, as someone, I, I think I prefer just being able to sit down and watch a 20 minute tight briefing than what E3 kind of was slowly drip feeding into, which is like these big weird conferences with cutaways to people. And mm. I just, I, I, I was, I don't know. I think I, you guys will have a different perspective having gone to a lot of these types of things and that there's, there's elements that I'm sure will be missed, but as a very much viewer, I'm totally fine with like directs and state of plays, I think. Mm. I, yeah. And uh, like, I, I, I just think like, kill it. Uh, and <laughs> the, the, person, the person in, in 10 years time <clears throat> will look back at E3 and go, the person who executed it was Jeff Keighley. Um, and <laughs> like, the Summer Games well, Fest that's, yeah. is, is E3. It's just yeah. going, like, I think that the ESA have shot themselves in the foot time and time and time again if you look and and like not only from just the way that it was becoming inherently outdated to have this huge show when companies yeah. could just do it themselves so it's getting harder to convince people to come and do it then obviously covid comes along they fucking leak information of the <laughs> attendees like they got a bunch of people doxxed with that stuff it's incredibly expensive to join up and do something at e3 if you are a publisher or, or trying to show off something so i think there's just they are such a mismanaged organization that someone like Healy comes along and he's like, I love video games. Uh, I know everyone in video games. I'm just going to basically do what you do, but I <laughs> actually like video games and I'm not just trying to like turn a huge profit. I'm going to um, cut out the fat. I'm going to cut out, uh, like, as you said, even the stuff the ESA was doing in its sort of last few years of like 2018, 2019, opening up the tickets to the public, charging stupid amounts for mm. it, uh, creating all those like tiered versions of it. It's like they're three years behind what they should have been doing. And as you're right, like shooting themselves in the foot by the sense of like not making it feel welcoming, not making it feel like they're at the forefront of what these events are meant to be. And you're right, Jeff Keighley swoops in and, and makes it again something that we all watched and felt energized and were like, this is the energy that they mm. were trying to get back. And unfortunately, the only thing the E3 or the ESA have with that is a show floor. And that is the yeah. thing I think that's still, as someone who's been there, it's like it's still the thing that is undeniably exciting and it's exciting to shoot and cover and like relay back. And yes, I know a lot of people are like, I don't get to go. It's a journo thing or it's a you know very limited thing. Still watching coverage of that versus what we saw in the last couple of years of watching coverage of, as Will, you mentioned, just people sitting around doing their own kind of like, I don't know, three idiots with a microphone talking about <laughs> gaming, thinking it's interesting to watch or listen to. I don't know why anyone thinks that's cool. Um, but like these sort of soft podcasts around these announcements, just it was fatiguing in a way that didn't have the energy that E3 does. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I totally see that. And I see a lot of people in chat who are, who are saying like, they'll miss that excitement of this, of the shows and that, that sort of energy. I think though, at the same time, it's like, yeah, I guess it's weighing up that compared to 
how much more effective is it to deliver your information yourself? How much easier is it to get people to write about your stuff and make mm. videos about your stuff when you're not dropping, like everything is dropping in three days. Um, and, and so you can actually spread it out a bit more and get your own space promoting your thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, and, and also I think that Keely will probably just go, okay, I'm just going to do an in-person event when I can again, like yeah. he'll probably just take it. It'll probably it'll be just a new version of E3. That's kind of the same, but it'll just be run by him. And th there's the bad taste of the ESA that's in everyone's mouth is just gone. And the, the delicious taste of Jeff Keighley is now <laughs> just like, you know, <laughs> dripping across the tongue. Doritos and Mountain Dew and Keighley. Mm, what a combination. Gosh. No, I think it's you're right. It's so funny that that's, yeah. the, I, I remember those moments so much. And it's like, <laughs> wait, so the Doritos and Mountain Dew guy is now basically emperor of video games? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the Schick's Turbo Man or whatever, the huge mascot of a Schick Razor. But uh, no, I, I think we're seeing it a lot post-COVID, which are events uh, in particular that had to have completely closed down are being rebuilt and having a restructure about them, be it live music and, and mm -hmm. things like E3 as well. And they're kind of having a chance to rebrand and refocus. And I think the ASA had lost their way and this might be fortuitous in, but then again, 2023, the statement that the ESA made was the exact same statement they made a year mm -hmm. ago and a year ago before oh. that, which is like, we're putting everything on hold, but next year will be the year it all works out. So we'll be back next year to report on how it failed as well. Uh, I saw in chat, uh, Melodic Storm also made the great point that the Game Awards is kind of morphing into that mm. stage show thing with all the world premieres. And that's totally true. And again, Keely, just King <laughs> Keely. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the rolling, the rolling slow death of E3 is, is, is kind of sad, but, uh, but it's also like, I feel like COVID is the best thing that's ever happened to that thing because it meant it's, it's managing to like exit with a state of grace that it, it that I wouldn't have expected it because it could keep just blaming it on something else until it, but it keeps it, exiting well, and then no walking back and going also I'm back. And then it's like, no, <laughs> totally, no. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, all right. Uh, rounding out the stories for today. It was a it was a weird week of news. There was lots of bitsy little things, uh, and and this one isn't a particularly huge story, but I think it's more interesting about like where games are headed, uh, and that is talking about Game Pass, uh, and they have announced a family plan is re is reportedly in the works. Sorry, it's been reported a family plan is in the works. Microsoft did not actually officially announce anything yet, uh, but sources quoted by Windows Central said that Microsoft is going to be moving ahead with an Xbox Game Pass family plan, which could be set to launch sometime this year. Uh, apparently, you'll be able to share access to the premium family plan between up to five accounts within the same country, mm. not within the same location. Mm. Uh, with the subscription handled and paid for by one central account holder, uh, there are still lots of questions uh, to be answered, like uh, is there going to be separate family plans for PC or console? Uh, will it be exclusive to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate? Uh, what is the pricing? All that sort of stuff. But just broadly speaking, um, I think it's a, this is like a matura maturation of a subscription service when you go, okay, you can start sharing the account stuff with or, or like multi, you know, like with Netflix, depending on the plan you're on, multiple streams to multiple devices in different locations simultaneously mm. is is the version of the family plan. Mm. Um, and so, this, yeah, this to me is interesting that that's going ahead. I, uh, potentially, I foresee them losing money at the beginning, where they go, okay, like if I was in if I was in college or something and didn't have a lot of money, I would just say to my friends, look, we're all just going to put five bucks into this prepaid credit card a month and share a family plan. Well, this is the um, thing. We're going to define, we're going to have a lot of friends defining families of going like, should yeah, we be exactly. a family should guys? <laughs> yeah. Should we, should we take the plunge? I think it's time. Yeah, yeah let's do it. We've been friends for this yeah. long. Let's just, it's just a, just a little contract piece of paper you sign. Yeah, do it. Um, uh, yeah. It's 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 strange because uh, you're right. I do think there'll be a loss at the beginning of it as mm. a as a format change, but it will. I mean, the the price of what it will be will definitely be a minor discount. I would have thought on what you'd be getting as separate accounts on gold. It's like There's, if you were paying five, because like because I mean, you know, I have I've got two kids, so in you know six years time or something, there's a world where I'm paying for three Xbox uh, Game Pass subscriptions. Mm. If I if this didn't exist, and that's like. Well, that's like at least 50 bucks a month on that. So I'd just be interested to see what the limitations of it are. I think that will be the interesting thing. It's going to be a question of 
uh, which games can be played for certain hours, which ones can be played at the same time, when can accounts be... Like, I don't think it's just a case of a, it's an open gate for, uh, you know, five accounts to just have full access to Game Pass, Gold, and I, I, I wonder in which interesting way they're going to semi-limited... I think like even Netflix has done, which is like the family account is just two screens at once, but I've mm-hmm. often had that thing where... Or, or your Adobe accounts where it's like someone signs in, it boots the other person off. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm... Will yeah. nodding in the sense that you feel like they're going to do something similar. <laughs> well, that was the that was the main thing I was kind of thinking about because a lot of their first parties, like Sea of Thieves and stuff, would be something that you'd want multiple members of a family playing at the same time. Like you want yeah. to be co-oping, and so they'd need to be a- allowing multiple accounts at the same time. But it is it is you know there is always a limit with those family things. Apart from something like I guess Spotify allows all account users to be using that at the same time, so it's it's yeah. possible for sure. I, I think th- I think that it would be weird if they limited it in mm. any way, um, because that stops being a family plan. That becomes like we've got a couple of logins that we need to coordinate between us, and and it's like, well, okay, then if if there was some time where you couldn't play because someone else was playing, then you would just go, well, this doesn't work. Yeah, I, I think the Spotify comp is is really mm. right. It's like you have five streaming accounts and all of them are fully functional mm. at all times. Um, the other the other thing for me is that, like, you know, doing this, obviously they've said Game Pass is the future for them. It's now str- uh, not just streaming, but subscription plans are sort of not the future, but the present for video game uh, consumption. What It's going to be really interesting to see what particularly Xbox games are like in the next five to 10 years, as I mentioned in that first story of going, if if you are getting all this money from this recurring service, can you be sinking huge amounts of money into the s- sort of games that we know? Yeah. Yeah, and the sort of games that we know like PlayStation make and that sort of thing. Yeah. Or like Will said, uh, is it going to be more about so much of our stuff is multiplayer because we can also monetize on the other half of that? Mm. Like there's not a store in The Last of Us, but there's a store in Halo. There's a store <laughs> in Sea of Thieves. So we can continue getting the cash on the other side of that. And if the families are all playing together, then everyone wants skins of X, Y, and Z. So, mm. yeah, it's just... Um, mm. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting in like five years from now and see where both of them sit next to each other as, as you said, as a service. But how, what that does to the product, I think, is actually a really interesting mm. question. Like what that does to the game design and that, how that affects uh, both, as you said, the in-game transactions and just how the games are built up like will might might evolve or devolve depending on how well this this is picked up yeah uh and john bib in the chat says the timing of this leak seems conveniently close to uh sony's psn plus announcement which is totally true like i I saw some people on my timeline going like oh this is a response to this i'm like well no there's no way they turned this around this quickly (laughs) with that but the leak could definitely be like hey we're just gonna like put this out there that sony is saying pay us extra money and we'll uh, will give you these old games and Xbox are coming out saying, we'll actually save you money and give you new games. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> And we're here, uh, like a yeah. real family, we're here in between the two parents getting them to fight each other so we get the best value at the end of the day. Exactly, yeah. Which it's, is what it's, being it's about the family. most gamer Christmases we can possibly get our hands you know on. What, you uh, know what Daddy Xbox got me? <laughs> tell that's PlayStation. <laughs> what, what did he tell? What did he give me? I've never been more turned off by hearing you say, you know what, Daddy Xbox got me coyly as you sort of like shrug your shoulder at the camera. <laughs> oh, I don't like, I don't like sexy coy Gus. Okay, that's literally all the video game news that happened this week. There's nothing else you need to know.